15. Sulfuric acid is manufactured by a series of reactions represented by the following equations. And then we have these reactions right here. But let's get down to business. It says, draw the Lewis structure, predict the molecular geometry by Vesper, and determine the hybridization of sulfur for the following. And in this case, we have to do it all for H2SO4 molecule. And they give us a little hint. They say the hydrogen atoms are bound to oxygen atoms. Now, do we really need to know that sulfuric acid is manufactured in three steps? Absolutely not. All we have to do is just draw the Lewis structure, give the geometry, and the hybridization with the H2SO4 compound or molecule. Now, just know that if they didn't say draw the Lewis structure and they still asked for a molecular geometry and hybridization, the easiest thing to do is draw the Lewis structure. So I'm glad that they said that here. Because when you're talking about hybridization or geometry, you got to draw the Lewis structure just to see what you're looking at, right? So that's what we're going to do here. We have to draw the Lewis structure for H2SO4. Now, this will be kind of like a quick inversion as to how to draw a Lewis structure. So let's see if your answer matches mine. But if you do need a more in-depth and step-by-step -step solution to how to draw Lewis structures, you can always check out, uh, there's another playlist on the channel that goes into just drawing Lewis structures. But let's just see. Let's see if you guys got this. So H2SO4. Remember, hydrogens are never in the middle. And between sulfur and oxygen, the least electronegative is in the middle. Sulfur is less electronegative than oxygen. So it seems like sulfur would be in the middle, surrounded by the four oxygens. So if I could draw an O nicely, now I'm just being picky. So O, 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 and O. And then they do see here that the hydrogen atoms are bound to oxygen atoms. If you want a reasoning behind this, H2SO4, one of your strongest acids, and the acidic hydrogens are always bound to the more electronegative element. So that's why they're bound to the oxygen instead of the sulfur. So maybe I'll put one hydrogen out here and one hydrogen out here. Okay, so everybody gets their valence number of electrons. Hydrogen is in group one, so they have one valence electron. Oxygen is in group 6A or 16. The lucky number is six, so each oxygen gets six valence electrons. And then, once I do this, sulfur is in the same group, 6A or 16. So the sulfur gets six valence electrons as well. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you make all single bonds first. So dot to dot, just to see if you could get an octet. So I do all singles first, single, single bond, single bond, single bond. And it seems like the hydrogens are good, right? Hydrogen only wants to have one bond. This oxygen is good. It's got the octet. This oxygen and the hydrogen is good, but these oxygens are not. They have seven valence electrons. So I'm going to just make a double bond here on both sides, and that will get you your octet. Now this oxygen has two, four, six, eight electrons, and the same thing with the one on the above. And just know that sulfur, if it's in the middle, it can have an expanded octet the max of 12 electrons, and that's what it has here. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So that's fine. So Lewis structure, check. Now we're gonna do the molecular geometry, and the molecular geometry, even though there's basically two different uh, elements that we could be taking it from, they're assuming that we're going to be taking it from the center atom. So in this case, we're just solely looking at the sulfur. But just know that you could get a geometry off of this oxygen, but we're going to just do it based off of the sulfur here. So you only have to just worry about what is bound to the sulfur. And in this case, when you're doing your geometries, always just look at the atoms that it's bound to. Seems like it's bound to one, two, three, four oxygens. I'm not counting the hydrogens. And I say to myself, okay, so four oxygens and no valence electrons, right? No dots, not valence electrons, no lone pairs, no dots. So in my mind, which is basically this picture, right? These are all of your molecular geometries by Vesper that probably your teacher or professor won't let you use this on the test. So you got to memorize it. But I say to myself, okay, 
My A is my central atom, so that's my sulfur. I'm looking for something, doesn't matter whether it's single or double bonds, but I'm just looking for something that is bound to four elements. So they would be known as X here with no lone pairs. And it's tetrahedral, right? Here's my A in the middle surrounded by my four oxygens and no lone pairs. So this would be tetrahedral. And maybe I'll just put it over here. Tetrahedral. And now we know the geometry. Okay, now let's do the hybridization. That's all of this information. Now hybridization is a bunch of S's and P's and D's. This is just your orbitals that overlap to form your bonds, whether they're sigma or pi bonds. But your hybridization links with how many letters there are in here. So for example, like an SP3 has one S, and three P's, right? P3, three P's. So there's a total of four letters here. Same thing with like SP2, right? One S, two P's, that's a total of three letters. And the number of letters equates to the number of things that are going on around the atom that they're asking for. In this case, they're asking for sulfur. Now, one thing is either one double bond, sorry, I, I don't know why, every time I see single, I just say double. One single bond or one double bond. Even though there's a double, you know, two lines here, it's still classified as one thing. If you saw triple bonds, that's still classified as one thing and one lone pair is one thing. So now you just gotta go around sulfur. What does this have? Well, it's got one single bond around it, so that's one thing. It's got another single bond, that's two things. It's got a double bond, even though there's two lines, that's three things, right? One, two, three. And then it's got the other double bond, that's one more thing, so you got a total of four things. I don't see any, um, I don't see any dots, right? No lone pairs. So for sulfur, it's four things, four letters, and you guessed it, SP3. And that is the hybridization of sulfur. And there you go. We have finished this question. What'd you think? Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching the video. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love chatting with you guys. Um, yeah. If you want to help us out, please hit the subscribe button. We're almost at 30,000 subscribers, and it's all because of you guys. I'm so glad that this channel is you know, helping you guys in your classes. And we also offer physics and math videos on the channel. So maybe we can help you out with those. Thanks for being part of this cool community and let's just keep learning. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.